Good morning and welcome January 26, 2022 to Morning Prayer. I'm Evan Gertner. It is my baptism birthday. In 1975, I was born on January 19th, and then I was baptized the next week later. So born on a Wednesday, baptized on Wednesday, born on a Sunday morning, baptized the next Sunday morning. I love baptisms. And I love when families who have had a child quickly schedule that baptism, or even as they're pregnant and they're anticipating the birth of their child, they, they schedule the baptism. It's not something where you have to wait for a lot of family to be in town. It's where the word of God is received and the Holy Spirit works to create saving faith. Today in the Commemorations Church calendar, we're gonna remember St. Titus, pastor and confessor. We'll start with Psalm 18. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who delivered me from my enemies Yes, you exalted me above those who rose against me. You rescued me from the man of violence. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations and sing your name. Great salvation he brings to his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David, his offspring forever. Psalm 18 is a reminder that in many of the Psalms, you hear the voice of someone who's been rescued, whose life has been changed by God. God changes lives. He transforms us. He's a creator God, and he recreates us. He takes us from lost to found. He takes us to broken to healed. He takes us from divided to whole. God is the one that creates us. May you rejoice this morning in the creation that God has given to you. A reading uh, from the Old Testament is from Zechariah chapter 2 about a a man with the measuring line. Let's see what he does with that measuring line. I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then I said, where are you going? Great question. And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see its width and what its length is. Behold, the angel who talked with me came forward, and another came, an angel came forward to meet with him and said to him, run, run, say to the young man, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as villages without walls because of the multitude of people and livestock in it. And I will be to her a wall of fire all around, declares the Lord. I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, declares the Lord. Up, escape to Zion, you who dwell in the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Ephesus, glory sent me to the nations and plundered you. For he who touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Behold, I will shake my hand over them, and they shall become plunder for those who serve them. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I come, and I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Sing, O daughter of Jerusalem. Sing aloud, for the, I come and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Up, up, up. It is time to return. It is a time for your flesh to be silent and your spirit to sing. It's a time for your your aching, your wandering, to be done. <laughs> what a joyous promise there is in Zephaniah. All right, let's read a little bit about what Martin Luther has said about uh, a vision. He said, a wonderfully choice vision. It very vividly reveals to us the heart and innermost emotions of the priest. He had heard the clear command of God to rebuild the temple. Then after hearing that word, he thought that he should listen to God, but he still kept wrestling with himself over the problem. Who knows whether God intends to approve? Perhaps God will reject us sinners. This is exactly the way the human heart battles against sin in the presence of God. For Satan so inflates and exaggerates sins that the heart becomes convinced that God will reject it. It can conceive of no other God but the one who threatens it with a beating or a flogging. So the high priest Joshua, crushed and terrified by his sins, does not go on with his task. 
but he is strengthened and encouraged to believe that the Lord is not angry, that he has turned away the accusation of Joshua's conscience and is accusing Satan himself, who so discourages the heart with the heinousness of its sin that it cannot go on to serve its calling. The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. So by the way, um, after that reading from Zephaniah, I, I stopped short and there's a, a vision of Joshua the high priest who's wanting to rebuild the temple but is concerned that it will just get torn down again because the Lord doesn't approve them as a people. And Luther's writing about that, that sense of doubt is built on Satan's desires to destroy us. The Lord rebuked you, O Satan. This is a very wonderful and sweet comfort. Everything is contained in the fullness of this comfort. So neatly has he arranged all his words as if to say, from now on, Satan, stop opposing the priest. The Lord is all things cursed which you inspire the timid priest to think and which frighten him from this task. You are causing him to be downcast before God and to dare nothing before men. You are acting as if the Lord had completely rejected Jerusalem. But the Lord has not done this. On the contrary, he has chosen it and loves it as his own possession. Remember how earlier in chapter 12, it talks about how the people are the apple of his eye and he will draw the nations to his new city. All right, let's think about St. Titus, pastor and confessor now. St. Titus, like Timothy, who just recently we remembered, uh, was often associated as a friend and co-worker of St. Paul. Titus was a Gentile, perhaps a native of Antioch, who accompanied Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem when they brought assistance to the Christians in Judea during a famine. You can read about that in Acts chapter 11 and Galatians 2. It is not known if he accompanied Paul in his first or second missionary journeys, but Titus was with him on the third one when he helped reconcile the Corinthians to Paul and assisted with the collection for the people in Jerusalem. It was probably on the return to Jerusalem that Paul left Titus in Crete. Afterward, Titus is found in Dalmatia. According to, according to tradition, Titus returned to Crete, and he served there as bishop until he died in the year of our Lord, 96. Almighty God, you called Titus to the work of pastor and teacher. Make all shepherds of your flock diligent in preaching your holy word, so that the whole world may know the immeasurable riches of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can rejoice. This is a day the Lord has made for you. Be glad in it.